fresh meat. During the early to mid 2000s, the torture porn phase dominated the horror movie genre. One of the best examples of this divisive form of horror filmmaking was Wolf Creek, the 2005 Australian made movie directed by Greg McLean and starring John Jarrett that became an independent horror success story, not to mention a popular franchise consisting of a sequel and TV series. Wolf Creek also proved to be a controversial film with officials in Australia and film critics worldwide with its inspired by true story premise and brutal depictions of violence provoking protests and walkouts. Now seen as a vital addition to the horror movie resurgence of the early 2000s, Wolf Creek has endured, leading us to ask in this video, what the f happened to this horror movie? Set in 1999, Wolf Creek tells the story of three backpackers, Brits Liz and Christy, played by Cassandra McGrath and Kesty Morassi, along with their Australian friend Ben, played by Nathan Phillips, who are traveling across Western Australia when their car breaks down at the Wolf Creek National Park. It is at this moment that the unfortunate trio meet Mick Taylor, a sadistic and psychopathic serial killer who subjects them to unspeakable acts of violence. Much like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the marketing of Wolf Creek stated that the film was based on a true story. And while this is not necessarily accurate, two infamous true crime cases involving the murders of backpackers in Australia inspired McLean during the writing of the film. The first is that of Australian serial killer Ivan Malat, a truck driver with a history of violent crime who brutally murdered seven backpackers between the years of 1989 and 1993 in rural New South Wales. Then there was the case of Bradley John Murdoch, a convicted criminal who, in 2001, murdered British backpacker Peter Falconio and attempted to abduct his girlfriend, Joanne Less, in the Northern Territory. In an interview with Hollywood.com, McLean delved further into the inspiration for Wolf Creek. Quote, I wrote the original story five, six years ago, and it was pretty much a standard horror thriller set in the outback. Then, over the years, I heard about a couple of true cases that happened in Australia, one of them being Ivan Malat. That case was influential in many ways because it had all of these elements that were more terrifying than anything I could possibly come up with. More recently, there was Bradley Murdoch. I also tried to blend cliches and icons from Australia, the Steve Irwin and Mick Dundee characters, all of these big, broad Australian characters recognizable in the States. I want to thank you guys for watching What the F*** Happened to This Horror Movie and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. Central to the success of Wolf Creek is the character of Mick Taylor, a horror movie monster with a unique antipodine edge. In a documentary about the making of Wolf Creek, McLean said, quote, the movie was really about what would it be like to be stuck in this incredibly isolated place with the most evil character you can possibly imagine, who is also distinctly Australian. Playing the role of Mick Taylor was John Jarrett, who was a prominent fixture during the 1970s new wave Australian cinema with roles in Picnic at Hanging Rock and The Odd Angry Shot. Prior to his casting in Wolf Creek, Jarrett had re-established himself as a friendly face on the lifestyle TV show Better Homes and Gardens. In an interview with AssignmentX.com, McLean described the inspiration behind casting Jarrett in Wolf Creek, stating, quote, I went to theater school as a director, and when I was there, I saw John in a production of a play where he was playing a very racist cop and John was known in Australia before that as a Tim Allen home improvement kind of guy. Uh? The perception in the Australian media was that kind of character. I saw him in this play, Song for a Bad Guy, and I thought, this guy's got a dark side as an actor I could explore. Jarrett was impressed with McLean's screenplay, and during a meeting between the two, McLean knew within 10 minutes that Jarrett was the right actor for the role. Playing the role of Liz was Australian actress Cassandra McGrath, who McLean felt had a relatable quality that the character required. Kesty Morassi was cast as Christy after a different actress dropped out. Ironically, Morassi was scheduled to take a backpacking trip when she was offered the role. Rounding out the main cast is Nathan Phillips as Ben. Wolf Creek also featured the film debut of Teresa Palmer in a background role. With a budget of 1.4 million, the cast and crew of Wolf Creek began filming in South Australia on a 25-day shooting schedule. Cinematographer Will Gibson shot Wolf Creek on the HD cam format and almost entirely handheld. While aerial footage of the Wolf Creek meteorite crater is genuine, 
The scenes in which the three main characters ascend the edge of the crater was shot on a hillside in South Australia. Filming was also hit with rainfall for three continuous days, an unexpected development considering their location had not seen rain in over six years. McLean opted to incorporate the gloomy weather into the shooting script to add a feel of menace. What is with this weather? McLean had his cast stick rigidly to the script for a couple of takes before allowing them to improvise, with many of these improvised moments included in the final film. These include the party scenes, the campfire belching contest, and a moment when Ben plays with his flashlight after he is stranded. Many of the film's action scenes also involve the real actors, including the scene where Christy runs through the outback barefoot, resulting with Morassi having hundreds of thorns and nettles removed from her feet. Jarrett especially took to his role of Mick Taylor with extreme dedication, creeping out his co-stars in the process. Jarrett spent weeks in the Australian outback preparing for the role, with some reports saying the actor avoided showering so he could have a more rugged look before filming. Jarrett has gone on to refute this rumor somewhat, stating that he did not want to wash off the tattoos applied to his forearms. Jarrett also improvised much of his dialogue, as well as the creepy, sinister laugh, which said took him for months to get right. McGrath has gone on to say that Jarrett's laugh gave her nightmares. <laughs> One particular scene in which Mick tortures Christy in his shed proved to be very unsettling for the cast and crew. McLean, wanting to get a shot of Cassandra's point of view as she looks on through the window at Christy's plight, cleared the crew from the shed, leaving only Jarrett and Morassi inside. Soon after McLean called action, he became convinced Jared had gone too far. So intense were the screams and cryings from Morassi and the unsettled reaction from the crew. Producer Matt Hearn had even said that the female members of the crew were brought to tears. When McLean burst into the shed, both Jared and Morassi were stunned at the disruption, with Morassi believing the intensity of her performance had fooled McLean. In an interview with Entertainment Focus, Jared described his approach to playing a character as violent and evil as Mick Taylor, saying, quote, when I'm playing the guy, I've got to stay in that sort of tough arse, devil may care, larrikin kind of person that he is. I have to stay with the bounds of that without becoming a bloody serial killer, of course. I'm not a method actor. It's pretty hard to go for a coffee between setups and go back to John Jarrett. Then someone yells out, come here, John, it's time to cut this girl's tits off. You've got to kind of stay in the area, if you know what I mean. It's really hard to explain. Wolf Creek had its world premiere at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2005 before it was released in the U.S. on the 25th of December, 2005, where it grossed 16 million at the box office. The Australian release was delayed till November 3rd, 2005, when the Director of Public Prosecutions in the Northern Territory placed an injunction on the film's release until after the trial of Bradley John Murdoch, whose grisly crimes were one of the inspirations for Wolf Creek. When Wolf Creek was finally released in Australia, it became the highest grossing R-rated film in the country's history, a record that was previously held by the 2000 movie Chopper, which starred Eric Bana as notorious criminal Mark Chopper Reed. Reaction to Wolf Creek, both from the public and the media, was split down the middle. While the film proved to be popular at the box office, there were numerous reports of walkouts, particularly during the scene of Christie's torture and the moment when Liz's fingers are cut off by a grinning Mick Taylor. On the popular movie aggregate website Rotten Tomatoes, Wolf Creek currently stands at 54%, with a consensus that though Wolf Creek is effectively horrific, it is still tasteless exploitation. One of the film's biggest detractors was the legendary film critic Roger Ebert, who placed Wolf Creek on his most hated list. In his scathing review, Ebert wrote, Wolf Creek is a film with one clear purpose, to establish the commercial credentials of its director by showing his skill at depicting the brutal tracking, torture, and mutilation of screaming young women. I wanted to walk out of the theater and keep on walking. Yet over the years, Wolf Creek also proved to have its champions. In a paper written for the Queensland University of Technology, Wolf Creek was cited as one of several films that initiated a substantial films of Australia horror movies released in the mid-2000s. Vulture featured Wolf Creek as one of the 25 best horror movies since The Shining, and Slant Magazine ranked Wolf Creek amongst its 100 best film of the aughts. The grisly exploits of Mick Taylor would continue with Wolf Creek 2 released in 2014, and a streaming TV series that premiered in 2016 and lasted two seasons. Now in production is Wolf Creek 3, where once again Mick Taylor will have his sights on those who dare step into his domain. A promotional poster for Wolf Creek 3 promises there will be blood. When it comes to a Wolf Creek movie, there shouldn't be anything less.